Minglawa, and welcome to Amai Radio Streamer today. I'm Michelle with the recent news and reports from around Myanmar. Tora Sizing and Soyinna got the latest reports on MOHS alert people to prevent the second wave. Pyotr Du and Katie will give us all the details on residents evacuated due to rupture of Eyari River embankment in Amarapura Township. Tora Sizing has the details on commodity market faces with high demand and lower price. Wilson will give us all the details on Myanmar needs to catch up with other ASEAN nations in art market. All of these reports will be coming up on Myanmar today, but for now, let's take a look at what's happening in local news. At the 73rd Mother's Day ceremony held on Sunday at the Mother's Mausoleum in Yangon, President Nguyen Miet and State Councillor Da Aung San laid the wreath at the Monument of Bojang San. Deputy Speaker U Tong An and Amyoda Lodo Deputy Speaker U Ita An and Union Minister laid the reeds at the tombs of Bujo Aung San and the martyrs, paid tribute and observed a two-minute silence. At the moment, the flag of the Republic of the Union of Myanmar was lowered to health mast. The God of Honor presented arms and the military bolt sounded the last post. Next, U Ye Aung Den, on behalf of U Aung San U, son of Bujo Aung San. State Councillor Da Aung San Suji, daughter of Bo Aung San, and families of the martyrs laid reeds in front of the monuments. Afterwards, U Pyo Min Dei, Xiangong Region Chief Minister and the Chairman of the Working Committee for holding the 73rd Anniversary Martyrs Day, Regional Ministers, Speaker, Deputy Speaker and MPs of Yango Region Lodo, and representatives from political parties paid tribute to Bo Aung San and the martyrs. The 73rd Anniversary Mother's Day ceremony was held in accordance with the COVID-19 preventing guidelines and directive issued by the National Level Central Committee on Prevention, Containment and the Treatment on COVID-19 and the Minister of Health and Sports. A total of 140 Myanmar nationals who were working for Ridge Pine, Central Miracle and Kamal and Vigor Committees in Jordan returned home on Sunday. Myanmar Airway International Relief Flight had carried the first batch of Myanmar citizens from Jordan and landed at the Yangon International Airport at 4.45 a.m. On arrival at the airport, the Ministry of Labor, Immigration and Population, the Ministry of Health and Sports and the Yangon Region Government provided them with the proper medical checks and arranged with them about 21-day quarantine. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has been working with Myanmar embassies in foreign countries and local ministry concerned to bringing back the citizens stranded abroad due to the suspensions of international commercial flight in accordance with the guidance of National Level Central Committee on Prevention, Control and Treatment of COVID-19. The ministry is also planning to bring back the Myanmar workers who are still stranded in Jordan in the second batch of repatriations in the fourth week of July. A special relief flight carrying laboratory equipment provided by the World Health Organization and exports for humanitarian work to provide support to the fight against COVID-19 in Myanmar landed at the Yangon International Airport on Sunday morning. In board of the flight, which departed from Malaysia, were about 60 passengers, including Myanmar nationals, coming from the United Nations Agency, from the International Red Cross, from the UK DIFD, from German GIZ and export from different organizations, according to the World Food Program, which arranged the relief flight. Today, we are here at the Yangon International Airport and we received the 11 WFP special flight bringing humanitarian cargo and passengers, said WFP Myanmar's country director, Mr. Stephen Anderson. Regarding the A flight, Dr. Stephen Paul Jost, WHO Myanmar's resident representative, also pledged that WHO would continue its support to Myanmar as the country fight against the COVID-19 is the best in situation. India, China, the Republic of Korea, Singapore, and Japan provided Myanmar with the medical supplies in support of fighting against the COVID-19. The 73rd anniversary of Mother's Day was commemorated at the Secretariat where the mothers were assassinated with a ceremony in Yangon on Sunday. Present at the ceremony were Yangon City Development Committee, Chairman Mayor Uma Mansu, committee members, department officials, and the Guard of Honor. They saluted the mothers and observed two minutes of silence.
Due to the COVID-19, this year's flag raising ceremony was conducted with only 67 people, while about 780 people, including students and members of humanitarian organizations, participated in the previous years. YCGC Joint Secretary Wu Den said, "This year's Mother's Day ceremony is unlike the previous years." It follows directed of the National Level Center Committee for containing COVID-19, and also from the Minister of Health and Sports. Various vehicles hung their horns at 10:37 a.m. across Yangon, about the same hour when Bojo Onsen and the mothers were assassinated, in their honor and observed two minutes of silence. Yangon City Hall also organized an offering of meals in memory of the mothers. That's all with the Lugo news. Now we'll move on to our first report. The number of COVID-19 cases in Myanmar reached 341, with 278 recoveries and six fatality until 20 July. Although the local transmission is almost under control, the Ministry of Health and Sports alerted the people to stay with the cautiousness since the country is accepting the overseas returnees. And the confirmed cases are found among the returnees. The Ministry of Health and Sports alerted the public that there can be lesser risks for a second wave of COVID-19 local infection if people continue to follow the basic health guidelines. However, it is the nature of people that they become careless when the local infections has not been found for about a month. In Myanmar, there are 341 confirmed cases with 278 recoveries and six deaths as of 20 July. It has been nearly four months since the first confirmed cases were found. The experts said that it is quite lesser in number than expected. People are running the daily routine for the livelihood, and some people are acting as if the disease had completely disappeared. People do not always wear masks, and some wear in a wrong way. They are weak in washing hands frequently and systematically. Social distancing cannot be practiced in the crowded cities. Ujo Jotun, the regional Lhota representative from Lai Township, said. <laughs> During nearly four months, the recovery rate of our country is about 75 percent, and most of them are discharged from the hospital. The death rate has stopped at six fatalities in Yangon. There has been no local transmission for about two months. We have to reflect that we could successfully overcome the first wave because of the collaboration of government and citizens. We have to keep this work in right path. We have to be alerted all the time because the schools are to reopen soon. The Ministry of Health and Sports reported that the global situation is not in good condition. The global infection is nearly reaching 15 million, and the fatalities get over 600,000. Especially Myanmar's neighboring countries are in high risk. India is the third most infected country with over 1 million confirmed cases, and Bangladesh has over 200,000 confirmed cases. Moreover, Myanmar is accepting returnees from foreign countries, including India and Bangladesh, and even from the United States, which has the highest number of infection in the world. Receiving the returnees poses the challenges to prevent the imported cases that can become the local transmission. Handling thousands of people entering the country to be put into quarantine is not the easy job, and what challenges more is the illegal entering through border areas. The case three three nine who is infected when picking up his friend illegally entering the country rings alarm of the local transmission. Dr. Tan Ai Zhou, director of Health Knowledge Promotion Division of Ministry of Health and Sports, said. The Ministry of Health and Sports repeatedly announced that the returnees have high risk of infection, and those who pick up the returnees can also be infected. Then their family, even the whole village, will be put under risk of virus spread. Especially the western border area needs more inspection. We request them to enter only if the government accepts officially. If they enter illegally, we need to know as soon as they arrive in the country, so that we can put them into quarantine. This is for the goodwill of others and themselves. We do not want the imported cases to lead to local transmission. 
It needs to be reminded that if the returnees come to the crowded cities without staying in the quarantine, that can has high percentage of local transmission. This is because the people are going outside to work and earn money without the proper circumstances for social distancing. Wu Wenai, the taxi driver from the Gongmyote North Township, said. <laughs> Some people wear masks, but some do not, because they are not used to wearing masks. For me, as I have to contact with many people, I put masks when carrying the passengers, but I do not wear it when I'm alone. The income is not that good like previous time. We are afraid of the virus, but we have to still look for our livelihood. Being a developing country, people have to struggle a lot for a living, and being able to control the first wave in a short amount of time is a privilege for Myanmar people. However, it is still necessary to prevent the second wave of virus infection, which can bring more severe impacts. That's the report on MOHS alerts people to prevent second wave. Thousands of households had to be evacuated due to the rupture of Eyre River embankment near Shuiger Reservoir of Ngadu Village, track of Amarapura Township in Mandalay Region. Thousands of households had to be evacuated due to the rupture of Eyre River embankment near Shuiger Reservoir and Ngadu Village, track of Amarapura Township in Mandalay Region. Eyre River water flows through the embankment into the nearest villagers so that the residents have been evacuated in time. Three villages near the embankment can be affected with the flood because of the rupture. Manali City Development Committee, Myanmar Fire Services Department and volunteers were trying to stop the flow of water by blocking with rocks and sandbags. Upyo Weta, member of Mandalay Region Red Cross Society, said, Previously, the site was planned to establish a sewage treatment plant, but the soil may not be solid enough. In my opinion, a dam should be built to balance the rising tides, where the soil is not solid enough since the beginning. The Red Cross team of Amarapuro has already opened a rescue shelter for the evacuee on the other bank of the river. On this side of the bank, the regional Red Cross team is on standby to carry out rescue measures and help the residents according to their situation. Therefore, the residents of low-lying areas in Amarapura Township were one to evacuate with the loudspeakers. Due to the breakage of the embankment of the ELD River in Mandalay, many houses in Amarapura Township were able to be evacuated, according to the locals. Uyale our resident Amarapura Township also said, the assistant the administrators, the firemen and the volunteers are announcing their public awareness for enabling the people to know if the residents have to move, the houses with motorcycles and cars will be a problem. The current situation is in need of relief camps. The residents here are living at temples, churches and pagodas. These places are not sufficient enough for more than 1800 people. The number of disaster victims can raise to more than 2,000 this evening. These people have difficulty in living. Usania, Minister for Mandalay Region Electric City, Industry and Construction, said. Month, August is the peak time for the tide. Prior to August, the respective government departments have to be able to control the inflow of water. The technical requirements for this will be discussed in detail. It is difficult to say exactly when the water will be restored. 
The regional chief minister also ordered the local authorities to carry out the provision of basic equipment in accordance with the rescue procedures. The Airy River continued to flow, causing landslides on both sides of the embankment, breaking the tunnel and breaking the embankment, and intensifying the flow. This is the first ever rupture of embankment and water flowing into the villagers during 20 years. That's your report on residents evacuated due to rupture of Airy River embankment in Marabura Township. Stay with us as we bring you more reports on Myanmar today. Currently, the commodity market in Myanmar is facing with high supply but lower price. Despite being the essential basic items, the sale is not catching up that of before the COVID-19 outbreak. Changes in the price of basic commodity as well as supply and demand conditions of the market have an impact on inflections of the country. The domestic commodities market is currently experiencing high supplies but lower prices. The panic buying occurred at the beginning of COVID-19 local outbreak leads to lesser in demand, which causes the goods to decrease in prices. Changes in the price of basic commodities as well as supply and demand conditions have an impact on inflation. Wu Aumin, Secretary of Market Research Association, said. Central Statistical Organization releases inflation report every month. In 2019, the inflation rate increased month by month for about 9% to 10%. However, after the outbreak of COVID-19, the demand dropped, so did the price. The inflation rate in April of this year was about 5.24%. This is because of price drop in commodities and fuels. Fresh water prawns and fish, chicken and goat meat, which are originally of high price, are still in high pricing. But we have a different kind of meat, vegetable and fruits available in the market. However, this year the GDP of the country could be lower than expected, 6.3%. There is still the market for the commodities because it is the essential basic items compared to other kinds of goods. Many sellers are competing for sales as well as services. And some also provide home delivery services in order to be able to secure a place. Mawiwitu, shop owner at Tenji Market said. It is unpredictable before we were doing a great deal, but later on the sales dropped. As it is food, we managed to sell a little, but it is not too bad. The commodity prices dropped slightly and so there were more sellers than buyers. For the time being, the price of onion and garlic drops, which is common at this time around. But we can expect the price hike in the rainy season and the Lent period. The price fluctuation is highly unpredictable since there is no donation event this year. Some Friday's door-to-door -door delivery services so that they get more customers. Compared to the same period last year, the consumer price index has increased. Data shows that price index in January 2020 for food group is recorded at 172.65%. 144.97% for non-food group and 161.33% for all groups. The 2020 index shows a 9.09% increase compared to the same period in 2019. This is because the commodities price included in the list increased significantly. Matatamon, a fishmonger at the number 26th street said, Sale is not good and it's cold. At present, there is an increased sale in prawns. During the previous months of the COVID-19 outbreak, people stay inside and now more people are coming out, but the sale has not returned to the normal yet. Of course, we're afraid of the virus, but we have to work for a living. I use protective items as well as hand sanitizer frequently. I hope that the sales will be getting better and better, but there is no such guarantee. Annually, Myanmar's GDP is averagely about 6 to 7 percent. 
For this year, the GDP is predicted to be lower than normal, according to the market experts. The local market researchers have done analysis for GDP development by service, industrial, and agricultural sectors. For the market calculation, in 2012 survey, 438 public service and goods, 108 foodstuffs, 166 non-foodstuffs are accounted as the basic. That's the report on commodity market phases with high demand and lower price. According to the report by some of the artists in Myanmar, the art of painting in Myanmar is left behind other ASEAN nations and to penetrate the international market. First, it needs to catch up with the artwork market in ASEAN. Wilson will tell us the report on what should be done to improve the art market in Myanmar and penetrate the international market. The art of painting is one of the essential parts of culture where many of Western countries consider it to be the key element in measuring development of a nation. This also makes the art of market of the West grow well. But according to some of the artists from this sector in Myanmar, Myanmar is left behind in this sector among other Asian countries, which means it is still a long way to penetrate the international market like other countries. The reason for being left behind other neighboring countries is political situation of Myanmar where the artists did not have much opportunity to do exchange in this sector with foreign artists. On the other hand, there have been some of the prominent artists who capture the interest of European market and other global attention as well. U Bangyan, one of the prominent artists from colonial era, was the one whose artwork drew the attention of the international market. Since then, the several artists from Myanmar also draw the attention of international market. However, according to the people from this art community, Myanmar failed to collect those artworks of the prominent artists, which makes their artwork no longer available in Myanmar, but in foreign. There are some artworks of the artists from Myanmar, which are kept in foreign museum, but in some cases, there is no artwork from prominent artists left in Myanmar. Speaking to MI Radio about Myanmar's failure to catch up with international market, artist Nibo U said, The failure to catch up with other nations is contributed to the fact that the political situation and its policies with international relations was the main reason where there was no interaction between Myanmar and other nations. But in that time, the world was going through globalization, already exchanging their knowledge in this sector. In order to grow in any field, we need collaboration with artists from other countries, but this sector did not get. Whereas other neighboring countries had developed their art sector such much already, penetrating international market and they were able to showcase their artworks to international artwork collectors. Vietnam was one of the biggest art market in Asia and then other countries like Singapore and Hong Kong region also come to play a huge role in the market. The difference between the artwork in Myanmar and that in international platform is quite different according to the artist. The foreign artists mostly do creative painting with imagination and this type of artwork is also in high demand in the market globally. Whereas most of the artwork in Myanmar is based on the academic realism and contemporary artwork which is high in demand but it cannot be said which types of artwork is the best for business because everyone has different own tastes of theirs. Artist Zhao Wu also spoke to MI Radio about how important international artwork collectors to the market here in Myanmar and said, For us, for the sale of our artwork, we depend on the foreigners, mostly artwork collecting tourists. But since it has been months with no outsiders coming to Myanmar, the sale is on the decrease. Not only the business there in Myanmar. In Myanmar, there are some artists with foreign market in Myanmar. For them, they regularly go abroad for the exhibition of their artwork, but 
as the world is in this crisis of COVID-19, you cannot expect this factor to do well. Speaking on the thing to be done for Myanmar to make art market grow in international market, artist Nipo Wu also said, I love the beautiful man Pandi Blight. So do choose her. I love Pandi Lai Male, go so up here lama. For this sector to grow, the most basic thing is the artists should make use of internet well, where they can learn the artwork of their idols through online learning and creating what the international market demands. Only when we create something, then we will be able to have one's own identity in this sector. We cannot do copycat, which will make us followers of someone's work. Creating something different is what the people actually want. And apart from what the artists must do to make this sector grow, there is also another area where we want the government to play a good role, inviting renowned artists from abroad, teaching and exchanging the knowledge between each other. The government should also emphasize the importance of this sector just like it does to lacquer and other handcraft work. This is Willen Sun for MI Radio. That's a report on Myanmar needs to catch up with other Asian nations in art market. And that's all we have for today's reports, and it's time to check on some international news here on Myanmar today. Organizer of a national worker strike say tens of thousands are set to work off the job Monday in more than two dozens of U.S. citizens to protest systematic racism and economic inequality that has only worsened during the coronavirus pandemic. Dub the strike for Black Life, labor unions, along with the social and racial justice organizations from New York City to Los Angeles, will participate in a range of planned actions. Where work stop pages are not possible for a full day, participants will either pick up during a lunch break or other moments of silence to honor black lives lost to police violence, organizers said. Strikers are demanding sweeping action by corporations and government to confirm systematic racism and economic inequality that limits mobility and career advancement for many black and Hispanic workers who make up an uneven number of those earning less than a living wage. videos, the pictures, the experiences that we're all witnessing here in Portland should be shocking to all Americans. The words and actions from President Trump and the Department of Homeland Security have shown that this is an attack on our democracy. Mr. President, federal agencies should never be used as your own personal army. Let's be clear, this is not political theater. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi called for greater efforts in upholding and promoting their ideas of building a community with a shared future for mankind and enhance China international influence under the guidance of Xi Jinping thought on diplomacy. Wang made the remarks at the inaugural ceremonies of the Research Center for the study of Xi Jinping thought on diplomacy on Monday. One described Xi Jinping thought on diplomacy as the fundamental guidelines of China's diplomatic work, as well as an epoch making the milestone in the diplomatic theory of new China. In his speech, Wang also stressed that China would fully implement Xi Jinping thought on diplomacy, remain committed to the path of peaceful development, and continue to advance the international cooperation and communication to help the world better understand the thought. According to Wang, the foreign ministry will also strive to promote the idea of building a new model of international relation featuring win-win cooperation and ha- enhance the China's influence by, quote, telling China's story well, end quote. For more than three decades, China has been building hydropower plants along the Lanshan River. 
In this special report, Lanchan Mekong River Corporation, this virtual tour will take you to the largest dam on the Lanchan River and show us why it's so important to the country. Let's take a look. Inside the Nuojiadu hydropower plant, generators are spinning to produce clean energy. We monitor the operation of all the equipment in this hydropower plant to ensure that they run in a safe and smooth way. We also help optimize the operation mode of equipment if there is demands for maintenance and overhaul. It's a job for coordinating all the equipment running here. This power plant became fully operational in 2014 with an expected output of over 5,800 megawatts. It supplies electricity mainly to Yunnan and southern China, as well as to neighboring countries like Laos and Vietnam. This dam is the biggest of the water conservancy projects along the Lanzhou River. It creates a reservoir with a capacity of 23 billion cubic meters. Now it's the end of the dry season. The reservoir water level has receded to one of its lowest levels. During dry seasons, the water discharge for power generation can increase the runoff volume downstream compared to natural runoff. Based on monitoring data, in 2019, when the most severe drought in a century hit the Lanzang Mekong River Basin, the Cascade Dams of the Lanzang River released 30% more water compared with its natural incoming volume. The Lansang Cascade Reservoirs store flood water in the rainy season and discharge more water in the dry season. Based on our data, during dry seasons in the past five years, we've released twice as much water compared with the natural runoff. If not for these Cascade dams, the downstream countries would find it difficult to get enough water during the dry season. So far, China has put into operation 65 water dams along the Lansong River and its tributaries. It's planning to add 23 more to the region. Along the Mekong River and its major tributaries, there are now nearly 280 dams in operation, with more than 90 new ones planned. The total water storage capacity will reach 130 billion cubic meters, uh, and the installed capacity will reach uh, 63. Uh, gigawatt uh, in by the year 2030. But a separate study showed the contribution rate of the Lansong River is small at the Stentuang Hydrological Station in the lower Mekong. The largest contribution actually comes from eastern tributaries with more than 20 percent. Back in Nuojiadu, the hydropower plant is turning to smart automation to help monitor equipment. By the end of this year, this central control room will be unmanned. It's a move to reduce operational costs, increase productivity, and churn out more clean energy. Meng Qingsheng, CGTN, Yunnan Province. The Chinese health authority said Monday that it mainly received reports of 22 newly confirmed COVID cases on Sunday, of which 17 were domestically transmitted in northwestern Xichen Wewaju Autonomous Region. The Chinese mainland on Sunday recorded five new COVID cases from the overseas. No deaths related to the disease were registered on Sunday, according to the National Health Commission. As of Sunday, Xijin had 47 confirmed COVID cases and 50 asymptomatic cases. And that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining me on Myanmar today. I'm an intern, Anka Michelle. Have a good day. Until next time.